are getting set up to harvest the micro green. And I'd love to show you how I do this. Stay with me. Here it is. We're going to start with uh, wasabi and typically what we do is, um, at least what I've seen other people do, is they would cut it in the tray. Um, but due to the density and, and other um, things that I probably might not have done right, like there uh, isn't a lot of dirt in here either, so what I'm going to do, or attempt to do here, out and do the flat like this. Now well, that's not pretty you know. Let's adjust this camera up a little bit there. So take this knife that I sharpened up really good and my bowl that I had had Incidentally, it got put away. So, we're going to, uh, usually we would cut it halfway down this way and whatnot. So, I'll uh, so with a sharp knife. So, I just sharpened this too because I, I found. The first batch that I that I harvested, I didn't have this knife anywhere near sharp enough. And I kind of struggled through it. So one thing that I repeatedly heard is uh, don't worry about um, the losses or, or the, the little bits that you miss. It's oh, I'm digging into the dirt. So, so I can I can smell the wasabi as I'm cutting this. It's uh, it's not like the wasabi paste that we, I guess Westerners would be kind of used to. Ooh. Man, I still got dirt in there. All right. So that's one down. Uh, so this is only my oh shoot my second attempt at cutting and I I didn't do a, a great job but I'm uh, satisfied with the with the amount of product we got there that's that's good 
I'm gonna have to dry it though. I don't know if you can see on camera there or not, but it's it is fairly damp. Man, I pulled a lot of roots. But it looks it looks good. But it it, it tastes like wasabi. Got a little bit of bite to it. It's not, it's not super spicy by any means. So this is the uh, broccoli rab, and I know this has got more spice to it than. Than the uh, wasabi did. Let's see if this is going to work any better. Well, it just wants to slide out. Can I pick it up? Oh, this is going to. No. Okay, well, I'm just going to cut this inside here. Puppy wants to play. This, so these batches were also done with a very thick, um, a very dense planting, which we're not going to do again. Um, and if I didn't say anything before, the numbers that I initially used were right off of the Mums website. Where I got all my numbers. Uh, they've got a, a section there for microgreens. And uh, I just printed off that, that spreadsheet that they had there. I just talked to um, another microgreen farmer to, uh, he, he helps me out, gives me a little direction where I need it, a little guidance. It's good to know, it's good to have somebody that's also in the industry because, oh, is that dirt? Maybe not. That that went better. That was it was good. So that was well, that's really good. And we're we're not going into that truly true true leaf stage yet. This is still the baby leaf, which is what we were aiming for. What's that? So, um, I don't see any true leaf coming out yet. So, we're good there. So, that's, that was the broccoli rab. And then this, it's all wilty and stuff. I wonder if I forgot to water it yesterday. But this stuff is starting to get to true leaf. I was noticing yesterday that it's the radish. Well, at least I thought I saw. I wonder if that's what happened to my peas too, because my peas were like this. They were kind of, they were wilty. I'm not going to be keeping a whole bunch of this stuff, I guess. I'm not going to cut the, the, the wilted 
stuff here in the corner. I just again the density was seriously thick on on the radish. So that was, that's pretty basic method in regards to, to harvesting microgreens. There's, there's not a lot to it. It's relatively quick and you get really decent harvests, right? Like it's, so each flat gave us a large bowl. I haven't weighed them out, but these are they're well over well, that one's a glass bowl, but well over a pound of flat, so that's that's good production. The microgreen shelf. So right here we pulled off those three flats 